The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. And I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. germs and gents uh welcome to oh well no um ladies and germs that's, that's <laughs> i wasn't calling women germs i was not doing it it was a mistake sorry about that welcome to the show ladies and gentlemen we are live we're broadcasting on the red voice media network the number one conservative network grassroots conservatives network out there if you don't know anything about them or this if this is your first time watching the show make sure that you tune in Go to rumble.com forward slash red voice media. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, not only not only do you, not only can you go to redvoicemedia.com to see all of the shows, and they have some new shows on there. God bless America. Have you seen these shows? Um, there's uh, this is my show with Drew Burquist. Then you got Reality Ranch with Jason Burmes. You have the three amigos uh, on the Wayne Dupree podcast. Rob Manis, you got Rob Manis. Sean Parnell, um, he's Monday through Friday now, five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, his show is called Battleground. Battleground. Um, then you have Reasonable Suspicion, uh, weekly episodes with Zeke um, Arkham. Um, Taryn Gregson is uh, also weekly episodes. Um, hers is Faithful Freedom. Um, Michael Rechtenwald. I hope I got that right. Navigated that properly, I think. Nice Thank work. Thank you very much, sir. Thank oh, you go, Lane. <laughs> he, uh, he has a re- uh, weekly episode of Wrecked. Uh, Bill Back America. They got a lot of shows on it. I mean, they got a lot of shows on here, people. And it's up to you. I mean, don't go around. Don't, don't you. Uh, I tell you what, if I ever see anybody on my timeline saying, that we don't have conservative networks out there that speak to us. I'm gonna block you. I'm gonna let I'm I'm, I'm gonna let you know this right now. I'm gonna block you, and I'm gonna tell my boys to block you too. Blockade, block, block, block island. We that that's that's where you go. As a matter of fact, let me introduce you to my family members. Let me introduce you to the Godfather Conservative Radio. Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, Wayne and Jason. Hello, everybody. Just glad to be here on this historic uh, era. <laughs> yeah, the last era of well, I don't even draw. Not we'll to be confused with. Er, 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 er. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the baby of the bunch. He hasn't been doing this very long, but he settled right in. Mr. Jason Robinson from Muslim Soda. Hey, hey, hey! Happy Taco Tuesday, everybody. And, and you know what? Today is historic because we got the Jim Jordan speaker vote, which we'll get to. But talking about Red Voice Media. We have shown as conservatives, 
we can move the country based on our wallet. Mm -hmm. We can support Disney or not. We can shut down Bud Light. You control just what you watch controls that. That's why Red Voice Media, what those guys are doing is so important because mm -hmm. they're giving you a conservative alternative. And they got yep. programming going all day long. It's all day just long. like throw it on when you're doing stuff around the house or doing stuff yep. at work. And you can get different conservative perspectives coming at it from all kinds of different angles all day long. Best thing you can do is support our work, support their work. Just tune in, folks, and then make sure you subscribe and make sure you share it. And you're making uh, we a got difference. It. You're making a yeah. difference. Don't uh don't underestimate your own power. I mean, you look what we did with uh this clown on the House Armed Services Committee. I mean, he was anti Jim Jordan all day long. The next morning, he's for him. Yep. It's because of you, folks. Yeah. Oh, my um, God. They've been shutting down that switchboard. Yeah. God love you know, him. Got the other thing, too, ladies and gentlemen, you, you're on the cutting edge of what's going on here. Because if you look out there in the media, you heard this show and what we said yesterday. And what Isla said yesterday, Isla Wong, you look at that and, and you see stories in the media. Why is Israel stopping? Is there a ceasefire in Gaza? Yeah, you know why it stopped. It stopped because of you. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, I did look at some of the stuff over there. They're getting massive rainfall over there, but that doesn't stop a war. Though. Massive like rainfall doesn't stop back one, too. Yeah. Huh? It looks like they turned the lights back on in Gaza, too. Okay, all right. Well, uh, you know, because there wasn't any lights in that picture yesterday. No, it wasn't. Was no, it was watching that live stream. I mean, it's the Super Bowl. Yeah, man. I, I yeah, don't trust I, anybody. I, I might as well just watch my eyes until the <laughs> until they AI the webcam. You know, right? <laughs> oh my God! Right well, look, <laughs> I, I gotta ask you a question, but I want you to take off. I want you to take off your partisan hat. Okay. Will Jim Jordan become speaker on the first tally? No. No. Okay. Will he become speaker on the second tally? Sometime after the first tally. Somewhere between one and six is kind of my range. I, see. I think now, it's see, different this time because the last time it was a new event. And even we, when we were, at least me, when I was, I was watching, watching it right. and I saw that vote at the end, I was like, is, is, is that it? Yeah, yeah, me too, me too, me too. <laughs> or is that just some preliminary vote to forward the motion to the next chamber and over there? Right. You know, I was like, I was like, they're doing it again. Okay, well, <laughs> let me sit back and watch some more. I was like, wait a minute, hold on, again? Oh man, it looked like we're gonna be here all night long, then, right? In the same again? way with the the vacate the chair vote, right? Yeah, that was like, what well, is he done? Is, right, is, oh, that it for, that's the first time in history. Yeah. Right, I mean, I was like, I was like, um, okay, what are they going to do about the people that didn't vote? Because those numbers aren't they don't reflect everybody. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is in California. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, nah, it's nah, done. nah. Oh, okay. Nah, 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 nah. And it made them. It's forcing them. It's forcing the Uniparty to show their true colors. Yeah. Folks, you got to pay attention. Forget the labels of the parties. The party, it's all a, it's all a, a rouse to, to make you think that you have a choice. You can see these people are on the same side. The only thing that affects them is when they get embarrassed in public or when their donors shut down. Yeah. For the for the um, for the Democrats. Now I know I know they have to be partisan, but for the Democrats not to vote to have a speaker. On the other side, I, I, again, I understand partisan politics, but what you're saying is you don't want the House of Representatives to do anything in that war that's going on. I know, I know, I'm playing politics too, but as long as you don't have a speaker, you can't address the situation that's going over there in Hamas and Israel. You can't take care of that situation. And also, from what we're seeing, we're also seeing that they are trying to add the Ukraine money on to a package for Israel. And and hopefully Jim comes out and says no. Now, 
if there's one thing about Jim Jordan now, and I know some people were real hard on him a couple weeks ago and everything, and it, and you know, I I was mad too. I mean, if I'm mad with Jim Jordan, it's about the show that is all. But everybody does a show, so I'm mad at everybody up there. But if there's one thing about him that I know, <laughs> if he gets in front of the camera, you're gonna hear the whole spew of everything. Yep. If there's one thing about him, he is knowledgeable. He, I mean, he doesn't sit up there and smile in your face. He tells you about what's going on, how's it going on, how how important it is to the American people, and what the American and and what they should be doing in Congress. Period. Now, if the Democrats don't want to jump on board, I'm sure that he will be. I'm sure that he will call them out for it. You know, he'll make them look bad. That's one thing Jim Jordan can do. Uh, but the people that are holding it up, you know, you hear you hear. Well, uh, the uh, the Republicans joined the side of the Democrats. To get McCarthy out, and then you hear, well, the Republicans joined the side of um, of uh, of Democrats to um, to um, get a new speaker, or well, uh, not to get a new speaker. It's like they're playing games up there, y'all. They're playing games. I don't know. I really don't know who's behind it because somebody's putting money in their coffers. Somebody's putting money in those. Those, military uh, industrial complex is lot could be, could be because that's, yeah, long, that's my litmus long, test for Jordan. As long as the house is out, the military industrial complex. <laughs> have y'all seen the stocks going up right now? Yeah. yeah, and ironically, a bunch of people in the house bought war stocks. Who knew? Oh yeah, that's another thing too. <clears throat> um, shut down Washington D.C. And return all the stocks, or and um, if you sell all the stocks, you sell it to um, um, charities for uh, well, not y'all can't get any money from the stocks. You sell, you put all that money into homes for veterans and um, kids and stuff like that. Railroad you bridges. Leave, you can't put it in real infrastructure. You you can't leave Washington D.C. with money. You shouldn't be able to. Because that, I mean, that, that's cheating, man. That's, that's big time cheating. Um, uh, and, and Donald Trump, Donald Trump is in Donald Trump is in New York, I think, um, today. As a matter of it's fact, a gag had, order. What a bunch of crap. Yeah, he had a he had a few words. This say. is the Attorney General of New York State, Patricia James, and she shouldn't be allowed to be Attorney General. She's defrauded the public with this trial. She said that Mar-a-Lago, she convinced the judge that Mar-a-Lago was worth in Palm Beach, Florida, the most expensive land in the world, I guess, and, that, and the most expensive houses definitely in the world, and Mar-a-Lago, the biggest house, the most spectacular place in all of Florida, was worth $18 million, when it's worth approximately, could be close to 100 times that amount. And based on that testimony, and based on her convincing the judge that Mar-a-Lago was worth $18 million instead of a billion to a billion five, which would sell very easily, which we've already proven, but we'll have people come up and say that and prove it, the most important people, the brokers that make the sales. But based on that, he ruled against me. He ruled fraud. I mean, he said fraud. They are the fraudulent people. That's the part that scares me, you know. You say about the house being out and everything, but Lloyd Austin says they put 2,000 troops on uh, alert anyway. You know, I'm just afraid that when you look at what's happening in the courts and in politics and in the media, it's all upside down. It's all pretend. None of it's real. So I'm afraid that the normal guardrails that are put in place in our system are irrelevant. You know, when a judge can do that, that's that's tangible. You can you can get a, an appraisal of Mar-a-Lago. It's not worth eighteen million. It's worth what Trump said, or it's somewhere in between. I'm sure he's trying to get the high end, preparing for sale or something. But you know, it's not. Th- this is all lies. And and you it, know, it, when are we going to stop it? Maybe Jim Jordan's the first step. You know, you bring the um, you bring the uh, Lloyd Austin with the two thousand troops. Maybe it's me. I thought Congress is supposed to be given approval for this stuff. And they probably, I didn't think there, there's probably I didn't some think resolution. Pentagon, huh? There's probably some resolution under the war on terror that they're allowed to do it. I mean, 
they've been doing it since World War II. Well, then you, know you guys, you guys yeah. are a little older than me, and we have a lot of people in the in the crowd that were well, thank you. that were. Thank you, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm getting to the Vietnam point. Like, isn't this how Vietnam started? It's like, how they all start, started. Let's start sending in advisors. Let's start sending in equipment. You know, we talked about it yesterday, too. How are we even talking about, like, oh, we can afford two wars? These aren't our wars. Why the hell are right. we paying for wars that ain't ours? And now, there's two kinds of wars. If Sorry. you want to have it be our war, declare war. I've said it from the beginning with the Russia Ukraine conflict. If this is our if this is our circus and this is these are monkeys, like then let's declare war. And if we're not going to, let's just stay the hell out of it. Like it isn't our problem. The last time we even came close with Vietnam, it was the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Yep. We had a naval presence like we do outside of Israel right now. And they claimed that the North Vietnamese army attacked a big giant Navy ship with a PT boat. <laughs> he actually said that. And right. that's what started the war. That's when Johnson escalated the troops and everything else. Uh, and it's been like that ever since. Um, when you look at the last time we had a congressional debate of any circumstance, and I'm sure you remember this, Wayne, was the Desert Storm. Yep. Desert yeah. Storm was the first time I heard, well, the, the esteemed gentleman from Tennessee and the yeah. esteemed gentlewoman from, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. like for days You're right. and it was televised and it was back and forth. And I, you know, nothing, and I think it was only one person that was against it. Right. And I don't remember and who it was, but I remember it was that. a Democrat and there's a black female. And I remember her because she said, if we give all control over to the white house for, to make decisions without us, then we are not only are we shucking our responsibility, but we're setting things up to in the future that's going to hurt whatever we do. Hutch, Jay, I don't know if they've ever gotten back <laughs> the control. And then we quit having no. budgets. We quit right. having budgets to, to spend it wherever you want. Nobody knows where yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. How much did the Department of Defense spend? I don't know. Yeah. Less than the interest on the debt. We know that much. <laughs> I mean, I remember that uh, before Barack Obama left, before he left, that Congress gave him, it was a year worth of a blank check to do whatever he wanted to do. Uh, uh, I don't know whether it was, when I mean to do whatever, it's like military-wise to spend he got a blank check to to do whatever he wanted to do in the last year of the the thing. They're doing the same thing, like you said, with the with the um, um the debt. But they just did it early in um, Biden's career. It's like this is this is what in the forty years that the Democrat were were in control of the House. This is what they were doing. This is what they were doing to fundamentally transform America, which they did. Oh, they, they did. did. I, I ain't gonna lie. They fundamentally transformed America in 40 years. In a hundred years, years, they're going to look back and they're going to say, not the individual, but they're going to say Team Obama was the worst thing that ever happened to this country because he's embedded since the first day he was president till today. He's been embedded. He's been behind the efforts to take Trump out, to take us out. Uh, him and Eric Holder are a stain. And there's a hundred other people with him. It's not just those two. There's people behind them pulling the strings. Well, yeah. And they were really smart. They started seeding people in the educational institutions. and Every in the agency. Yeah, in the intelligence agencies. And all these people that 20, 30 years ago in the 90s were becoming radical lefties. And they were starting out as an entry level whatever at the CIA. Now that person is a senior member of the CIA. And so the Obama activation was perfect because you, you've got all these people that that took 10, 15 years working their way up through the system. By the way, it's really hard to get rid of those folks. You can't fire them re real easy. You know what I mean? They make that difficult to do. And, and let's not forget what our friends at the NFSC said, too. Half of them are Chinese Communist Party supported right. at these agencies, especially no. the legal ones. These legal decisions that are coming out are going to kill us. <clears throat> I know. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. It, somebody's got to stop that. Well, and we've talked yeah. about 
the Trump business case, like this is the most egregious in my opinion, because you're going after a private citizen, a business developer for appraised yeah. value. Like if you if you really were going to enforce that, you would bankrupt every major city in the United States, because I guarantee what Donald Trump has done has been an accepted business practice for all of these business developers. And well, if it hasn't been, they haven't gone after the ones that that did the same thing. And right. Um, like John know, Conyers. Exactly. As we know, um, Donald Trump on the debate stage against Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton was trying to call him out for stuff. And he said, well, I was smart. Y'all made the rules. Y'all made the rules. I followed those rules. How, how can you get mad at me when y'all pass that legislation? You... You talk about right loophole? after you asked me for a donation. Exactly. Right after you crawled in my office and fell on your well, fell on your, your <laughs> chest and asked me for some more money, y'all made the, the legislation, and then you're gonna get mad at me. Doesn't fly with me. Now, I will go back to the Obama thing because this is where I differ with my two people, um, my two brothers. Um Obama has so many things in his in in his uh in his history in his life that it makes him a pawn. Right. That's that's what I feel. You can't be in charge if you have that many skeletons in your closet that the people in charge are covering up for you. They're covering up for you to to put you as a to put you as a figurehead. Absolutely. And, and I understand. That you said, I agree, I agree Obama, with right? that. I agree with that completely. Right, but um, that I think what you and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think what you're trying to say is the era of Obama is what right. brought everything in here because they used that him, that dude, as a conduit to do anything they wanted to do, just like they do with every single president. Well, they didn't do it with Trump. On the left. Yeah, on the left, right. I was uh, going to say, President Trump's the first president probably in our lifetime, maybe since Reagan, that hasn't been owned by somebody. That actually... Bush? Bush was... He's intelligence community intelligence all day long. community, military, industrial... And, company. and oil company. I mean... Yep. Okay. okay. I'll tell you what, if you ever get a chance, if you can find it, I don't even know where it is anymore, but Judge Brown did a, a, a report on Barack yeah. Obama and his background, and it blew right. my mind. Yeah. Him and the Bushes are this close. They're yeah. Right next they're to related. Each other. Yeah. Yeah, they're related. But again, um, I left the Democratic Party because of what the media was. The media used Barack Obama as a racist savior type of deal. I didn't believe in that shit. So I left. But... But the more I looked at it, I was like, oh, my God. When you put, when you step back and you look at what they used him for, I was like, they didn't use any other president for that except for him. They didn't use any other president. And look what they're for, doing now with Biden. Antifa. Antifa rose up under him. Well, yeah, you get the first black president and he can say the country is fundamentally racist, which is a self-defeating argument. How can we be president if we're so racist? But, I mean, he's stoked. Just go look at internet search or news media coverage of racism from pre-Obama and post-Obama. It fundamentally changed the way the country views race. Well, it started, well, it didn't start. It started fermenting <clears throat> the last couple of years of Bush in office, especially with the Katrina situation. Right. But I, but I, but I need to... Because I'm great on remembering shit like stuff like this. It's twice the governor. I was gonna say, governor, Wayne, we need the swear chart today. Awesome. <laughs> the governor and the mayor of Louisiana, which were Democrats, would not let FEMA in. Okay. As a matter of fact, they almost didn't let George W. Bush into the state. You know, so I because that's when I learned back then that. A gut, and that a president, which is weird, just can't go into the state. They have to get permission 
by the executive of that state to go in the state. Even if it's a Democrat, the Democrat governor has to give you permission to go in the state. That's why me um, and, and Hutch and Jay um, were kind of a little bit shifty and, 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 and with the evil eye about the FBI just rolling into Florida to Mar-a-Lago without DeSantis knowing about it. Can't do it. Can't do it. You got to let, I mean, a, a former president, you're going to do a, a raid? Oh, the governor has to know. So, but to go back to Bush, that um, that Kanye West thing, remember that? I do. George Bush don't like black people. All the stuff that was happening down there, the Democrats were, were the Democrats really were in control in Louisiana, and 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 and, and all the racist things that were being thrown at George W. Bush. George W. Bush, even though I, I'm not a favorite fan of him. To this day, he said that still hurts him. About that was in his book. I read his book right after he left, and that was in yeah. it. He and but it was starting right there, and then Obama got in, and then everybody was like, "Oh, we'll jump on this side," even though Hillary's running. But then Hillary, and, but then Bill Clinton starts talking. Wait a minute, he just said something that sounded sounded racist. Chris Matthews like. He just said a black man couldn't be president. No, he didn't. But that that era ushered in. I'll tell you, Barack that was Obama. one. That was one of the most nauseating. I, I was traveling right at the beginning of the Obama administration, and I went to Dulles International Airport, and man, there was an Obama store. Yeah. It was a whole store. Yeah, yeah, with Obama worship stuff in it. It was it was Jim, scary. Jim's loved that. And look, not only <laughs> not only did they use him for the homosexuality and 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 the and the um and 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 all of the uh, um uh, the um the health thing and stuff like that and everything, but they made money off the black man. They made money off of him too, just like you said, the stores, t-shirts, oh, arm plates, man. those plates. plates. If you look at those collector coins. The number one collector coin in the history of collector coins was the Obama collector coin. No, Think not about even that. close. Think about that. They, they, man, they. It and, says and, more and, about and, this country than it does about Obama. Exactly. Exactly. At that time, it sure did. And and then when you ask people, you're like, why'd you vote for him? Because he's black. But guess what? He didn't. He didn't win the presidency because of black people. Nope. He won because of white people. That's true. Okay. With all the black people that voted, he couldn't have got no, in. Every place. black person got to vote twice in Philadelphia anyway. But <laughs> one, of them, one of them was 13, 14 times. And she got off in Chicago. They always they do. Wouldn't it be fun if we ever got the real breakdown of the 2012 election? That one still looks sketchy as hell. I'm me. still now, man. I, I almost jumped off the roof because of that one. <laughs> I almost jumped I mean, off the roof because of that one. The, 2020 will go down as the most yeah. anomalies ever where yeah, it's just but, like statistically really weird, but 2012 is pretty close where it's what like, gives me is that people forget 2012 though, Jay Pe people forget right? it was stolen from Mitt Romney in 2012. Right. Probably, it was probably, legitimately just as well. stolen. Huh? probably just as well. Yeah, I know. I know, but still, man, I mean, man, they were working on that stuff. And and again, I go back to the y'all can disagree, y'all, but the, uh, to our Red Voice Media people that are out there that are probably watching us for the first time, I've always said the Dems never got over the Republicans uh, impeaching Bill Clinton. Never did. Never. They and and and, and then couple that along with the twenty with the two thousand election with George W. Bush beating Al Gore, you pissed him off for eternity because. <laughs> After that, they were like, <laughs> they were like we ain't gonna James, lose again. James Carvel still pissed off. Right. Remember 40 years, didn't he say 40 years? We're gonna be in power for 40 years. Yeah, okay. All right, James. Well, <laughs> they kind of are because they control all the government agencies. So including I mean, the Republican gonna, Party. Right. Yeah, they control half the Republican Party and all the federal agencies. And people People don't realize when we talk the Uniparty, that's that's the big part of it, you know. I mean, if you think of, let's say you run a big 
big box retail. Let's say you run a Target store that's got 500 employees. Well, you can put in a new store manager, but you still got 499 employees there that you got to root yourself through that have a certain behavior set. And the federal government is so large and it's so full of all these people doing awful things that, you know, it's going to take a big purge in order to get that in order to get the, the country back. Now I'm saying purge it, purge it, God darn, purge it. Shut it down. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. I, I think <clears throat> I think anybody watching this show by now thinks like us. Just shut the whole God darn thing down. Shut it down. We ain't afraid of it. You know why? Because we have con we have contingencies. Because each state has a government. Each state has a freaking government. Let's roll with that for a little bit. Now, I know some states might not fancy. Uh, you might not fancy a certain state. But you ain't got to go to that state. Go around it. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and if you, you know figure what? the federal government's supposed to provide national security, regulate trade and tra commerce between states, well, they actually have a pretty narrow scope. Very narrow. Supposed to do. Very narrow. Right. And the Thank fact you. that they're the biggest employer in the history of humankind yep. and they're involved in every aspect of everybody's life is yes. like, hey, it's the That's where you're going to have to stop it right there. That's a good place to start cutting. It's going to be hard, though. Because you've got a couple public sector trade unions, labor unions, that are involved in the federal workforce. Right. Uh, and they'll fight hard, man. They'll fight hard for one guy, one position. It well, doesn't mean you can't do it. doesn't mean you can't do it. The way yeah. to do it is actually just eliminate different agencies. Or you could take John F. Okay. Kennedy's executive order that established the unions and strike it down. Yep. <laughs> we all know what happened to him. And he, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny to say it. Um, I was reading, you know what? Uh, um, before we go to break, I was reading somewhere where the 90s was the, the most dangerous. The 90s. I beg to differ. I think the 60s was the most dangerous because so many public officials were getting killed um, either on TV uh, or um, just publicly killed and i think america lost the the last bit of innocence that it that it had after that because you're getting a president was killed then his brother who was trying to be president was killed you had two and, civil rights leaders that were gunned down i mean uh you had a, you had a major civil rights worker that was gunned down in his um in his uh driveway you had the Bay of Pigs situation where we were almost World War III. You had the rise of um, Cuba's uh, guy, uh, Castro, or maybe or maybe that was in the 50s. Did you ever see a was Netflix um, documentary? That was good, Cuba. too. I did see Damn. that. Oh, my God. That was good. Yeah. And maybe it's the way Netflix do, does their movies, Hutch. Hutch. But I was pulling for Castro, and <laughs> I mean, I was like, "Yeah, get him, revolution, do it." And then he just changed, man. He, you know, he's like, "Ooh, ooh." And um, Roosevelt, Roosevelt had a part in that too. Teddy, Teddy went down there with his boys to um, fight in yep. um, Cuba. Oh yeah, I think he got his ass waxed though, but uh, yeah. Oh, Teddy, you've been watching the Wayne Dupree podcast here on the Red Voice Media Network. Again, don't forget to check out Red Voice Media, uh, their Rumble channel. And if you're watching the Wayne Dupree show on our Rumble channel, click the follow button. For some reason, we've been stuck at 2000, for 216,000 for over a year and a half, and I don't understand. I mean, all of you beautiful people that, that, that are in chat and... and um, it's like the followers are at 216,000 for about a year and a half, but the likes are close to 600,000. I don't understand. So, um, and I, I should have a rumble, um, uh, award back here, but, uh, they still haven't given it to me yet. It's in the mail. It, that's what they told me in the last three months, but, um, I ain't got it yet. So. We'll see. We'll see. But we keep on 
saying what we need to say and do what we need to do. Uh, Jay, you got any quick thoughts before we go to break? Folks, uh, it, you can kind of tell in the numbers today we're getting a little suppressed, so make sure you do us a favor and hit the share button. I saw that. Beat the uh, beat the algorithm, folks. It's a battle we face every day. Because I don't know if y'all know this, when you're calling out the Uniparty, like both sides come after you. They don't like it. There it is. You know, like it. it. I didn't come here to make any friends. We'll see you after the break. See you after the break. <laughs> hey, well, look, I, I haven't even, I haven't even got the video yet. Quick. <laughs> There was little activity. Attention Americans, Uh, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! How exciting. Welcome back. Welcome back to, what are you reading? What are you reading? No, there's activity on the Gaza cam. Okay, listen. Oh, um, real well, quick. I'm watching the House vote. Okay, great. I got two because, screens. Because great, because I, I got I wanted to say this earlier in the show. Welcome back to the show. Um, Jason Robinson, um, conservative godfather, um, Hutch Baylor Jr., Wayne Dupree here on the Red Voice Media Network. Zelensky, who's fighting his own war in Ukraine, fighting his own war, supposed to be on the battlefield commanding that, Wanted to go to Israel. No, 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 you don't. Say it again. No, 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 you don't. Ben Benjamin Netanyahu said, "Oh man, we don't need you. We don't need you. <laughs> you know, you, you know, no. The time is not right for that. So it's like, wait a minute, you fighting your own. Bo- I, I ain't never seen anything like that. I ain't never seen a general or a leader." From another country that's that's going through a war, want to fly over to another country that's going through something to make an appearance. What is that? What is that? that? It's called fundraising, Wayne. He's just traveling around. You know, he's got his little hat out. Like, hey guys, hey guys, can uh, anybody got any? Hey, hey, I'm going to try to get my funding pushed through with yours. Maybe we should work together, Israel. To get joint funding, things. I'll like. tell you, you know, something that keeps coming back in my head is that we need to focus on the border. Yeah. God bless Israel. Good luck. We got work to do here before we can come to your help because we're about ready to get swallowed. Yeah, and it hasn't hit yet. I don't no, know where they. Hasn't. I don't know where they're keeping these people. But I, <laughs> but I've watched. I've watched cams on the, on uh, the war room with Bannon. Yeah. That look like human rats coming through. There's so many of them. Yeah, yeah. They're somewhere, yeah. and sooner or later they're going to show up in Des Moines. 
I see, I see them walking in the jungles of the water and stuff, and it looks like like 14, 15 caravans of people. I'm like, okay, well, when are they? Where are they? Because it's right there. I mean, it, is this going to take the entire military to deport these people? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I'm I've moved past the let's secure the border. I've moved to let's put the military at the border and close it, and then let's start mass deportations. You have to. Any of these folks that are in the country that aren't supposed to be here, go home. And And anybody that has a problem with it, get on the truck. Yeah. 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 Yep. I agree. This shouldn't be controversial that somebody who's in the country illegally shouldn't be here. I mean, if you walk into no Israel, no nothing. This is it. This is the sole focus of the U.S. government. And Jim Jordan has the opportunity. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not, I'm not sold on Jim Jordan yet. I'm I'm not either. I'm hopeful. That's what I was saying earlier. Right? I mean, it's like I understand. I I I, I like him. I want him to be good. I want him to be um, the best yeah, speaker exactly. in history. Right. But he's right. got to do it. We can't do it, and we yeah, can definitely not use an emotional shield if he right. starts screwing up. Because It'll here's be- the thing: he's turned it down twice. Mm-hmm. He's turned it down twice. He turned it down at the beginning. Well, actually, this year he turned it down at the beginning when we all wanted him over McCarthy. We, we wanted Jim Jordan. He said, no, I'm, I'm going to go for McCarthy. Then he put his name in the hat when they removed McCarthy. Wait, they put his name in the hat. They put his name in the hat. Right, right, right. And then Scalise said that, uh, well, he had more of the votes. So then Jordan said, he tweeted, well, I'm voting for Scalise. After after he, w- he had like 99 votes and Scalise had 113 Still could have fought it. Still could have made some switches and stuff. He just tweeted out, "Well, I'm going to vote for um, Scalise." I'm like, "Damn, you gave up again!" And and now all of a sudden, jump behind me, I do it. I, you got to watch him. You got to watch him. I I mean, again, I don't love a politician. I want him to do good. Me too. Because he's one of the last ones we need him. Yeah, he's one of those last ones that we champion back in the day. He's one of the last ones in Congress right now that well, we felt was something. So and here's we the need sad him to thing. come through. What he's going to have to do is get in, finish passing the 12 funding bills, yeah, send them to the Senate and the White House, knowing they're not going to approve them, and then just dig in like a tick and say, these are the bills that were okay to fund. And if you don't want to sign these bills, then the government's going to shut down. It's on you, Biden administration, and it's on you in the Senate. And he's got to figure out a way to navigate away from the Ukraine funding. Yep. That is, the, to me, that he said that he was against it. He did say they he voted against, against They voted against him because of it. Yeah. Now it's time to do the work, Jim. Yeah, he did. If you buckle he, on that Ukraine funding, then I'm done with you. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. we've seen it even with McCarthy. If you look at what ultimately failed McCarthy – is we were playing a game of chicken with the Democrats and McCarthy just blinked and he gave them everything they wanted at the end. So he had all the like sound. We and always theory. do. Yeah. And, and who, whoever gets the speakership has to be willing to either say, we're just going to roll over. Let's not put the country through this. I mean, for McCarthy on that debt ceiling bill to make it such a drama filled thing, just to bend over and give them everything they wanted. Like you could have done that a month earlier. If you were just going to do that, you know, knock off the show. Um, but like the Biden administration has shown they know Republicans will cave. So they'll just say, nope, we're not signing it. We're going to blame you for the shutdown when the Republicans just need to say, no, here's the thing. The, the, these are the funding bills. These are what the American people want, we feel. And like, if that means you're going to shut down the government, Joe Biden, that means you're going to shut down the government. And from last time I checked, many people side with shutting down the government so i mean i think they're stunned at the support that jim jordan has from the country right i think that's really blowing their minds in washington i don't think they knew you know i I mean you know how dc is it's like its own separate thing yeah these people are down there and they just lie to each other yeah um Um, see jim jordan Oh, Elise is giving the speech. She's nominating him. 
Yep. We'll see what happens. Say again. It's going to be interesting. Say, She's a say it again. Elise Stefanik is giving the nomination speech, it looks like, for Jim Jordan right now on C-SPAN. Okay. Um, and that's that's another thing that we we push. We push that you don't watch Fox News. We, we're not a Fox News um, no. prostitute. We want y'all to... Uh, honestly, C-SPAN is probably the best place if you're not looking at it from a streaming network outside of the United States of America. And I also tell you to look at that. Look at BBC. Look at um, WION, which is in India. I like I like that. Um, the Australian... Love you, Australia. Uh, I like the way they make fun of um, Joe Biden in Australia, too. Uh, yeah, it, I mean... You see, they ousted show. that Nazi in New Zealand. No... Yeah, they won. The conservatives won. Nice. By a massive amount. Oh, yeah. Nice. People don't like being locked down. I you know, guess. It, yeah. It's funny you say that international news stuff, too, Wayne, because if you watch at the international coverage of Joe Biden, like our media tries to like put lipstick on a pig and like, oh, everybody tries to say like, oh, he's great. And people around the world, like you'll see these newscasters, like I think he pooped himself. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're I right. Watched, yeah. No, it was so embarrassing because I, I, I grew up with network television and I loved 60 Minutes, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I used to watch it regular. And you know, when I watched Scott Pelley, what a scum! Scott Pelley looking at Biden like he's a, an esteemed statesman, and right. Biden's answering him with his eyes closed. Right. You know, it's like, this is embarrassing. You're, he's sitting there like he's the, the king of England or something, you know? <laughs> the guy's like, well, um, you know. He asked him why he wanted to run for president. The man didn't even mention America. He wanted to do this in Russia, and he wanted to do this in the Middle East. It's no president of the United States, Joe. Border. You, you know, um, let's see. What I want to talk about real quick. Um, breaking news. and. Um, I've been noticing this from our media, and I think, uh, and I think some some of our some of our representatives have called out the media for their coverage of the of what's happening over there because you're starting to hear more about the Hamas uh, casualties than you are uh, the Israeli casualties lately. You're hearing about the kids, um, Hamas kids, you know, the retarded ones, and um. You, y'all should never have told me that. Um, but once you this, see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> no. Um, report Israeli strike kills six children in Gaza school. That's well, you know, in. it's time for Americans to wake up to this game, yeah, because they've been using this game for 40 years. For a long, yeah, for a long they're time. not allowing these people, first of all, Gazans. Even though their last election was 27, 2007, they elected these people yep. yeah. with over 90% of the vote. Yep. So, first of all, they're categorized like that. They're ruled by terrorists. Second of all, they're not allowed to leave. Yep. Hamas is the ones that sets the military headquarters up in the basement of the maternity ward at the hospital. They're the ones that do it. The, the biggest thing that Hamas needs and the whole world Muslim Brotherhood needs is dead Gazans. If you live in Gaza, your value is when you're dead and they take pictures of you and videos of you. They've done this a hundred times in my life and we fall for it. The leftist people, the jihadists in this country spew it. They'll spew it from the halls of Congress. Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. And if she's not there, Nancy Pelosi will do it. Question, well, question to both of me. I think I asked you yesterday, but I'm going to ask you again. Do you think Israel is going to send in forces to yeah. um, ground forces? Do you think that they're going to do it? I don't think they're going to send conventional forces. I think they'll send in small recovery units. I don't think it's going to be making Gaza a parking lot like it was originally going to be. I think they're going to send in kill teams. Right. They're going to, they yeah. have a list of leaders. Yeah. Political and military. And they're all dead. Yesterday, Hezbollah and um, Hamas basically are coming out almost baiting 
Israel to send in ground forces. Now, you remember what we were talking about on yesterday about um, we saw some information, credible information. They were waiting for the ground forces before because they were going to do it, and 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 they were going to light them up. It was a trap, basically. We we gave you the link. Uh, um, um, NFSCofficial.com. You can go check it out. BB decided over the week on um, Sunday, not going to send it in. Yesterday afternoon, right after the show, um, Hamas or Hezbollah saying, We don't care if they send in ground forces or not. That's what they said. I'm like, Okay, I understand what y'all are doing now. Y'all are baiting them, y'all are baiting them in the um. And what's cut? Egypt is saying that the Western media is lying. They're saying our border is open. They can come through. It's just that um, Hezbollah just won't let anybody come out. Uh, I saw I saw a convoy of medical uh, trucks and and all that stuff outside the wall. I guess in Egypt, nobody's there. It almost looked fake though, but um, I saw them and I and. But you, but you don't see anybody on the other side of the wall. You don't see anybody on the other side of the wall. It's just field, and then it's like all these trucks are on one. That's why I look fake. <laughs> it it's looked like somebody see, went into a room and did a little camera action on. You know, <laughs> I saw a report that sounded credible to me uh, that said that they've been staging this event. You got to remember this. This jihad has been going on since the fifth. It's forty seven, right? Since Israel was founded. And so was the Palestinians. They first used that word in 48. But they've planned this since we lost in Afghanistan. Since Joe Biden and, and General Milley and Lloyd Austin showed the world that we gave up, surrendered to the Taliban, that's when they started. And they've got tunnels under that city. There's 20,000 people per square mile. Think of that. That's a lot of people. That's Nairobi people. Damn. And well, remember, and you remember, go ahead, go ahead, Jack. Go I was going to say, if you if you flash back to when this first happened, a thousand people came across, and we've said before, like that's weird. How does this happen? And then it was all live streamed, and everything they showed was really awful stuff that everybody can get there. And then within twenty four hours, you get guys like little little Weasley Bench Piro, like screaming, like, go in and nuke them. I mean, not nuke them, but yeah, like flatten them. Yeah. What a guy. That, huh? That's what they, that's yeah, what yeah. they wanted. Like yeah. whether there was a counter attack or whether it was just media propaganda, they were looking for an outsized response from Israel. They that's were exactly looking- right. You're man, you are spot on. And that's why, and ladies don't take any offense at this. It's the way we're built. Right. All right. You can't be like Ben Shapiro and make decisions like a girl. You can't use your emotions. If all it takes is for them to put a decapitated baby in front of you, for you to commit World War III, then you don't need to be making decisions, man. And that's why. And that's why when I saw um, the 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 person in charge of Daily Wire a couple weeks ago, I mean, well, when this whole thing started, he said the reason why Ben um, Shapiro hasn't said anything is because it's the holiday, the Jewish holiday, and such and such. I was like, so we're we're not looking for any. For anything from ben. ben is in charge of a website. We want to hear from people on the ground over there. We want to hear from reporters over there. We want to hear from leaders what they what they plan to do. I don't want to hear from Ben Shapiro, uh, who's in charge of the Daily Wire. That doesn't do anything for me. And just as soon as he got on there, we need to do it. We need to do this. We need to do this. We need to take him out. We need to take him out. You know why? Because we have to. Because. Because we can't allow everything to go to so he, ought like to move, he ought to move to Israel. Yeah, he, well, he, he, he ought he to move to Israel like, like my buddy did. My buddy sat here and, and ran for mayor of the city of Pittsburgh. And at the end of the day, he moved to Israel and he's been there ever since. He won't doing do it. first aid and stuff for people. You know why? You know why he won't do it? Because it'll be called up for duty. That's why. That's why he stays over here to run the website. That's why. He well, and. It. There is no greater gift to these terrorists than to make them martyrs. Like their 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 religion they right. ideology right. is built. I mean, if you're it has, a, to do with, it has to do with that inbreeding. Well, yeah, but I mean, 
if you look at their religious doctrine, if you die in service of the religion, killing the infidels, you get sent to heaven and get 50 virgins. And as a fiscal matter, they pay for you and your family. Like you know, you know the part that's funny that they didn't tell them? <laughs> the 70 virgins are dudes. Right. <laughs> It's wrong. It's wrong. Women. These are men. These are men. I did. I was wrong. I was wrong. We we were throwing all these people off the roofs. Oh, Shit. Hey, didn't yeah, it'd I, be them. Didn't I, didn't I throw you off to the roof? What's all these guys in Superman shirts? I'm so sorry, my friend. I'm, I'm so sorry, my friend. I still can't get over it. Jay. It was one of um the guy was the guy was pushed off the roof. Right. His hands were tied behind oh, him. Man. In a speed in the shirt. air, like he was going to land in a sitting position. <laughs> I was like, nope. man, they're really throwing people off the roof over there. How'd you like to be the last guy out of them 20? There's 20 guys up there. How'd you like to be the last one? <laughs> well, and, What's all that red stuff down there? Yeah. <laughs> and here's what's sad is like all the LGBTQIA folks for Palestine. Like, mm -hmm. folks, they throw gay people off buildings. Like, for all Period. the stuff that you want to talk about in America, like, oh, my God, it's a genocide. They're trying... No, 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 no. We might make fun of you because you're a dude dressed in a dress. Like, in, in, in uh, like, Hamas will throw you off a building. Like, there's there's, there's a large... All I want to do is keep you away from kids. Yeah, yeah, we don't want you having your junk hanging out, reading a story in a library to a little kid. Like, they want to throw you off a building. So they just, uh, they just nominated... Uh... Harvey Jeffries. Oh, yeah. Pete Aguilar looks like he's giving a heck of a speech. Bow ties up there now. Uh, oh, oh the one that almost broke the gavel. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Um, four. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mighty four. He called <laughs> Oh like, my God! That should have, video he should have had that gavel that Pelosi carried on the Obamacare thing. Yeah, yeah, right. right he yeah. had to yeah. yeah. use two hands for that. Oh man! Well, look, India, India um, ruled against gay marriages uh, earlier today or late yesterday. So you know, maybe it's catching on because I know Russia did the same thing. Um, we're only we're only stupid. Nation way, yeah. and well, actually, actually, our people voted against it too. <laughs> yeah, in California, our people voted against it too, and well, there it is. Uh, you know, the Supreme Court. Right? You see what um, a Democrat said? There was a Democrat that wanted to nominate George W. Bush to be Speaker. Yeah, that was tells awesome. Tells you all you tells you all you need to know about George W. Bush. Right. Here's um, Jim Jordan. We just chased down uh, Congressman Jim Jordan in the hallways of the Capitol. Let's listen to what he just said. Okay. Good. How many ballots are you willing to go? Will you do as much as Kevin McCarthy? We need to get a speaker today, and we feel really good about uh, where we're at. I mean, I'm sorry, I got, that, I'm going that, over to meet, but does that mean ballot after ballot, by the way McCarthy did? Whatever, whatever it takes to get a speaker today. Is what, we're, right what are some of the concerns that you've still heard from members of this time? I, we've been picking up uh, support every day, and so it's been. Uh, Have you again, I feel, I feel confident. Have you spoken to President Trump? Are you asking him to help you with this vote? I haven't talked to President Trump. I've talked to the President in a couple days. How have the whip efforts been going? Very good. Why would you why would you say to Ken Buck that the election was stolen in 2020? That was not stolen. Do you still think right. you watch out, watch out. No answer there at the end. Ken Buck, a Republican from Colorado, has asked Jim. They're such a clown show. I got to say, I'm excited to see how these votes go. Did he really say he told he told Ken Buck that the election wasn't stolen? He said it was stolen, didn't he? No, it wasn't. We just chased down uh, Congressman Jim Jordan in the hallways of the Capitol. Let's listen to what he just said. Okay. Good. How many ballots are you willing to go? Will you do as much as Kevin McCarthy? We need to get a speaker today, and we feel really good about uh, where we're at. I mean, I'm sorry, I got, that, I'm going that, over to meet. But does that mean ballot after ballot, the way McCarthy did? Whatever, whatever it takes to get a speaker today. Is what, we're, ballot, right? what are some of the concerns that you've still heard from members at this time? I, we've been picking up uh, support every day, and so it's been. Uh, 
have you spoken? Yeah, I feel I feel confident. Have you spoken to President Trump? Are you asking him to help you with this vote? I haven't talked to President Trump. I've talked to the president in a couple of days. How's the whip been going? Very good. Why would you Why would you say to Ken Buck that the election was stolen in 2020? That was not stolen. Do you still think that's okay. what I thought he said. He scared okay, me. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank he you. did say it wasn't stolen, but after he said it was stolen. Right, right. He corrected for his self, yeah. but not what George... Okay, I got it. Okay. Well, and what the media does is they play these word games where... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like everybody with a brain can look at the Twitter files and all this stuff and say... And the Zuck box and say people colluded to do some bad things with the election. And then on the extreme end of it, you have like servers being hacked and blah, blah, blah. And they equate the two opinions. And right. you can have an opinion that the media and big tech colluded to influence the election without thinking China hacked into the server. And But they try to frame it like if you think that Facebook suppressed stuff or Twitter suppressed stuff, that you're signing on to, you know, the Kraken story or whatnot. So, and Drew, not everybody believes the Kraken. So, Drew, Drew, um, Drew Burquist, who's in charge of Rare Voice Media, we're going to go to break. He just tweeted out, not surprised, but Pete Aguilar, a Democrat, just said a vote for Jim Jordan is a vote to turn your back on national security. <laughs> Says a party that has completely turned their back on the national security and always does. The ability of these people to make statements that they know are completely bullshit is astonishing. It's true. Well yeah, and, and and that's that's one thing that if if you become a political and you start watching the stuff like we have and you start listening to the bull crap that they do say, like, do they really believe that stuff? You know, it's like, do do you really believe that Republicans want to throw grandma off the cliff? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that law abi law abiding citizens are going out here and killing people? Do you really believe you want to make Second Amendment law changes, game changing laws, law changes for law abiding citizens? You, you look at the, pre the the precursor to all this. You look at what the Democrats have done. They want to. They, they've they've legislated legal marijuana. I'm yes. surprised that the drinking age isn't 15. You know they've destroyed the schools and and devoided us of critical thinking youth. Yep. So it's much easier to watch Dancing with the Stars or TikTok being high eating corn chips than it is thinking about things and making the right decision. It's easy to sway these lemmings. They're easy targets. I was watching a comedian one time and influencers. He said, um, influencers. He said he he walked into a, um, a McDonald's and the kid behind the uh, thing said that the order came to $2.73. So he gave the kid $3.03. Said, I shut the whole kid down. <laughs> kid, kid just stood there just looking at my, uh, uh, it was like this generation is is I mean, and it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Um, I was just I was watching this uh this I don't think it was a documentary, but you know, it's just Gen Z, whatever this latest generation is, or whatnot. Or maybe it was not this generation, it was it's a generation before them. They were born when the cell phone was already here. And internet. So everything they know from that point is a cell phone, internet. Yep. They don't know anything about what we grew up with, with which was marbles and 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 stickball and softball. Yeah, yeah, and jacks and jump rope and um, red light, green light, and big Cap wheels, flag, and yeah, yeah, and climbing trees and you know different. They don't know nothing about that. All they know about is texting. They don't even talk. And, you try to talk to these kids in that generation, they garble their words. They you, you can't understand them. Yep. 
I mean, they, they don't date dating. anymore. When's the last time you've seen kids dating? I know. I know. That's scary yeah. there. That because that's they're saying that AI and, and porno is is killing this. Not this, not this country, man. This freaking species. I think so. I do. I really, I really do. You got Instagram models, which kills me. What do you do? I'm an Instagram model. You shake your ass on the internet. Congratulations. Hey, that's it. Oh, I'm a TikTok model. Model? <laughs> model. That, that, that's what you are. A TikTok model. Oh, I'm a tick. Oh, uh, and and this will kill you. I'm a. I'm an Instagram creator, <laughs> content creator. Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm, I'm a content creator, and most of y'all and most of y'all don't even realize about the content thing. I got caught up in that with um, America's Voice. We got caught up with that with America's Voice for a year and a half. They took content, just took it. Kept saying we were going to get paid, never got paid. But they got content, and what happens when? When you sell yourself to that, and this ha- and 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 I'm speaking to these content creators, and then we get ready to go to break. What happens is you're giving your hard work to a company, and they ain't paying you, but they're selling your content as a way to get advertising for their company. See, look, we got we got writers, we got we we got all this stuff. Jay, you probably can um, even throw something out that. Throw something about that out um, out into the thing of what you've seen out there. People just creating stuff and creating stuff, and and and, pe- and people don't get paid except for the people that run the company. And then you turn around, like America's Voice. Uh, well, you know, we get a thousand dollars a month after a year and a half. But by that time, they've lost damn near most of their talent. I, I was going to say one of. One of the things we work with on some of my website projects is the, and it's really bad on the, on the right, more so than the left. The left will just suppress you, but on the right, I mean, Red Voice Media, we're really lucky to have them and they've been a great partner so far, but yeah, you, you get a lot of independent conservative content creators that get taken advantage of by big companies that sign these content creators to bad deals and they take all the money and they don't leave anything for the content creator. And then all of a sudden the right. content creator sitting there going, well, I can't pay my bills. So I can't keep exactly. creating content. And there's other, yeah. there's other forms of it too. Like for instance, my radio show, uh, you get paid for advertising and the longer you do it, the more it goes up a little bit, up a little bit, up a little, because your entire body of work is held captive. If Thank I you. want to delete my show, I have to go delete. 1300 individual shows for me to be able to delete my show off that platform. Yeah. Cause they've got people still download the old ones. Yeah. And they load them full of advertising and I get a pittance, but they've yeah. got the whole shoot match. Yep. Yep. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have more from the Godfather conservative radio, Miss Hutch Bailey jr. And junior. Mr. J.R. Robinson, my name is Wayne Dupree. We're broadcasting on the Red Voice Media Network. Again, don't forget, to, if you're following them on Rumble, follow them on Rumble. Well, if you're watching them on Rumble, follow them on Rumble. We'll be right Hey, it's Mindy here from Four Patriots. I have a question for you. When a crisis hits, what's the first food to run out at the grocery store? That's right, it's meat. And for good reason. In a survival situation, your body needs protein. It helps you build and repair muscles, It's great for your bones, and plus, it's usually pretty delicious. But there is a catch. Not all protein is created equal, and this is so critical to understand, especially in a crisis. See, your protein needs to check four big boxes. It needs to last a while, taste great, store without refrigeration, and it can't break the bank. Spoiler alert, most protein options fall short. Take peanut butter. Sure, most people see it as a survival food protein staple, but did you know most cans are full of added sugars? Plus, they don't last more than a few months, a year tops. Grocery store meat doesn't work either. First, it's expensive. If you've been to the grocery store recently, you know what I'm talking about. Meat prices are up big time over the past year, but it also needs to be refrigerated. 
So if a blackout hits and cuts power to your home, you might as well use it as a paperweight. But don't worry friend, there is a protein option that checks all four boxes. This option is guaranteed to last at least five years. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. It comes with an easy payment plan so it won't break the bank. And most importantly, it tastes delicious. It's our brand new Ultimate Meat Medley Jumbo Survival Food Kit. And right here on this page, you can score an introductory price plus some amazing free gifts. Now, there is one thing you should know. Every time we've offered meat in the past, we've sold out. So when people find out about this brand new Jumbo Meat Kit, we could see a huge rush. I don't want to alarm you, but there are no IOUs or rain checks on this meat kit. It's first come, first served. So if you're going to reserve your kit, you need to act fast. For starters, you get five meat options, chicken, beef, pork, turkey, and ground beef. So you aren't stuck with one or two types of protein. And the variety means you can use it in a ton of recipes. Chicken salad, burgers, tacos, you name it. You're in control, not the stock boy at the grocery store. Plus, you can actually pronounce the ingredients that we use. That's because there are only two. Meat, of course, and salt for preservation. That's it. No funky chemicals, no artificial gunk. The only things in your food are food. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Fourpatriots.com. Use the code, um, the code Wayne, to get ten percent off of your your purchase. Um, get prepared. The reason I'm looking at this way is because I'm waiting for Mickey Mouse to be nominated. I, th I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna say use promo code Jordan. Right, <laughs> Speaker of the House, baby. Although it looks uh, like he's gonna lose on the first vote. Were those yeah, Republican others? Uh, I believe I couldn't listen, but I turned it on in the break, and it, yeah, it looks like um, Bacon votes for McCarthy. What? Ken Buck misses the first call, but then he's a no against Jordan. Chaz Chavez de, um, Dairy Mir votes for Jordan. D. Esposito voted for Lee Zeldin. Is he a Republican? Yeah. He was trying yeah. to be the governor of New York. Zeldin was, yeah. Yeah. D. Esposito. Republican. Yeah. D. Well, Ballard. All Scalise, we can do is call him out. Elzy, Mike Garcia. All we got to do is call him out and pray that Hakeem Jeffries doesn't get any votes from our side. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, he just needs four, right? He just needs four or five. The king yeah, from our side. I don't. Yeah, I think so. We we can only afford four, so yeah, it's got to be that. So there's five, already five man. votes. Against, there's already five votes against Jim Jordan, and we're only up to the F's. <laughs> All right. Um, if you want to expose yourself as a uniparty? Go ahead. Right. We got we got time. Go ahead, do it. See, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. We owe it to the audience to never forget these names. Yes, we we owe it to the audience to let them know that Republican that Republican Party, to me, to, I mean, and 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 maybe I might be the only one, but I but I'm I'm glad I'm not part of the Republican Party. Me too. But I'm embarrassed that I vote for this bunch of group of people that we don't have a legit third serious party that cares for this country. Because these people are jokes. They're jokes. Well, look here. It's getting better every day. And I wasn't a, a proponent of this probably even this year. I yeah. want a third party, too. Yeah. But now we're starting to make progress. No. I mean, you, you got to intimidate them into doing what you want, and then you got to get rid of them. But the thing is, and, and you know, y'all can, and I want to hear, I want to hear what you got to say. But the thing is, is that these people, they're doing it because they're trying to get revenge on somebody else. And don't, okay. don't forget the Ukraine funding part. Well, 
You watch when it gets to that probably, Ukrainian probably, congresswoman. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Ukraine yeah, that congresswoman's had, gonna vote for freaking McCarthy. Yeah, that's probably she's Ukraine first. Yeah, we that should probably never have these foreigners in our government. I didn't even think uh, about that. You know, I just thought about revenge. Go ahead, Jay. There is an interesting thing that's happening though. And I, I saw an interview the other day. It was from this Democrat billionaire, Shamrath Pakaraka, however you pronounce too. his name. Tech but, billionaire. What's that? Mm. Tech billionaire. Tech billionaire. And it was interesting because he gave this really genuine interview and he said, we were sold a bill of goods. Like, we hated Donald Trump so much that the powers that be got us to do things that were bad for the country. And right. specifically, he, and he said, we hated the messenger, so he killed the message. And he said, let's start with border wall. Right now, anybody with half a brain can look and say we should have a border wall. Even Democrats are saying that. But we hated Trump. Trump wanted the border wall, so we don't build the border wall. Mm -hmm. One of the other big things Trump pushed for was filling the strategic oil reserve, capping it off, and refinancing all our debt when interest rates were like 0.1%. Democrats fought that. And everybody's like, yeah, let's not let him do it. And even though it was disastrous to the country to do that. And then he talked about peace in the Middle East. He's like, Donald Trump just wanted peace. He's like, let's get the Abraham Accords. Let's get some deals, let, whatever we need to do, because there's no good of it. And, he, and, and it was funny because he's sitting there and he's just stunned. He's like, how did they convince all these Democrats that these policies that are really good for America were bad? And it was all because they convinced people they hated Donald Trump. Because that's what's cool to do at the dope party. Right. You know, you listen, to, you listen to the things that, that's in people's minds, man. They have let the internet just take over their brains. Right. Yes, yes. I, they don't think for themselves. And You said critical thinking earlier. It's, it's hard press to find people that are on the internet that critical think anymore. The echo the, the on the platform echo chambers has destroyed almost half the country. The other half don't even get on social media, and if they do, it's not Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. It might be some other small time Reddit. Reddit. That's all I do is Reddit. Well, not me, but for these people, Reddit or. There's another um, there's another one out here called Quorum that all, all you do is put up questions and stuff and answers and legitimate answers and this and that. And then you have some people that spend the, <laughs> their whole life on Walmart sucks. I don't know if you've ever been there, but some crazy stories about behind the scenes of people having sex in the employees having sex in a Walmart. Yeah, Walmart sucks. Um, but they're not on these social media platforms. So they don't go into their uh, um, echo chamber uh, uh, partisan groups, but uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, and probably some of the other, <laughs> I don't want to go there. Some of these other conservative platforms, they have created those echo chambers and you don't, you don't hear anything else. You don't think for yourself. You can't because you're like, that's the person I'm following them. Whatever they think, I think I'm with them. They might be wrong. I'm nine times out of ten, they are wrong because we're right. And I ain't joking when I say that. We are right because we think. We do critical thinking. And then we come on this show, and then we throw things around. Did you? What do you think about that? Well, what do you think about that? Okay, well, oh, you know, I you think about it like that. Okay, yeah, bet, bet, bet. Let me go and do some more research on that. At least... At least we ask the audience, whatever you hear from us, at least go and research. Check it out. Don't believe us? Check it out. But do ask you to come back in the chat room and tell us that we were right. <laughs> Notice <laughs> they never do that. I know they don't. I know they don't. Just like American politicians. Yeah, you know, right. the head of Israel's security services came out and took the blame for that attack. He came out three days after it and took the blame for it. Not an American politician here would do that. Right. I'll tell you what you said, too, about that tech billionaire. One of the things that he said, that the Trump derangement syndrome did way more damage than Trump. Oh, right. You know, that's a guy admitting it. 
Well, and that's what I mean, where, you know, if you look at just the singular, and it's remarkable, President Trump back in 2014, 15, was probably one of the 20 most popular Americans. I mean, like, people love the guy, you know, I mean, people could think it was a Yeah, people could think it was a blowhard. But right now, like, like, there's a significant portion of the nation that thinks he should be, like, thrown in jail for the rest of his life. And it's... I mean, it's remarkable. You just and, and you look at like what the Joe Biden family's done, what they've shown, and, and and you look at what Trump's done, and you can't look at these two things critically and say, "Oh yeah, Joe Biden's clean." Like, you this know, is such a clown show. I mean, I'm watching this on the side, and, and like Hakeem Jeffries votes for himself, and they get up in a standing ovation. Jordan does the same thing; they do the same thing, and now they're already making postcards with Palestinian kids. You know, um, Jay, check your messages. Uh oh, that's oh my god, yes, (laughs) that's a beautiful picture, isn't it? That is lovely. (laughs) Wayne's a heck of a graphics designer. I didn't do that, I didn't do that one. I didn't do that one. No, no, that's to be expected. That's to be expected. No, I didn't do that one. Can we just talk about that for a sec, too, with the AI? And all that stuff coming up in this election. I mean, it's already funny. So as I think back to the fine people hoax, which was one of the greatest hoaxes ever portrayed on Americans. So they actually took this clip from this long sentence Trump said, where like, you know, there was fine people on both sides and they convinced half the country he was racist because of that one comment where what he was saying is there were two people with different opinions. Yeah, granted. And he even said, like, not the white supremacists. Those people are trash. But you brainwashed half the country about that. What's going to happen this election when it comes to AI and, like, just all these crazy ah, images? Damn. Uh-oh. Well, uh, you know, my, my representative just north of here just voted for freaking Scalise. Ah. Mike Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Kelly of Butler. The guy you thought was America first. He's nothing but a used car salesman. I had to turn it off. Sorry, I'm like, sorry, ah, well, we're going to beat around two here. Yeah, let me get this off too. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just. Yeah, that's right. Y'all knew. Yeah, well, look, y'all knew that. Y'all knew it was going to round two. We said it. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Y'all knew. Yeah, it that's why. Out. Once I saw the. I'm just saying, we like, got to remember those names. Yeah, because right. they're because they're worse than the people that voted for Jordan. I mean, these are people that are trying to derail MAGA. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of, I think, I think it's going to go to three or four. Um, and, um, we're only at the K's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I, I might need to like go take a nap and like, <laughs> like, yeah, you can't sit board through back to back things like that, man. It's like, no, nah. yeah, well, you know, no, we did. Like I, know, I, I ain't that doing that again. <laughs> oh, wait, we if did, they say though. I know. I don't want to do it again. Been there. We'll figure it out. I was sitting on my couch doing my computer work with it in the background the whole time. I could yep. start reciting the alphabet, you know? Yeah. Okay, we're yep. to the M's. Now we're going to have this one and this one and this one. And, you know, yep. we could tell each people how many no votes there would be by the time they get to the Q's. It was, it was, it was a trip, too, because, you know, it was, it was like, it was like when it got to a certain one. You knew, oh, well, that's five. That's Moving five. on to the next vote. Yep, next vote. You, We don't even have to call the rest. I already got five. But, um, yeah, I mean, the wait. They're just taking up time right now. They're just taking up time. And um, they shouldn't be there. They should be ejected th- from office. They shouldn't be there. But this one, I don't know if. If um, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's that cut and clear that they're going to switch back like Gates and them did. I really don't. You know how Gates and them switch uh, to vote for McCarthy, or is Jordan going to give away the farm to get elected? I don't think he will. I hope he. Doesn't. And if he does. That's against his nature. Yeah. Right. That's against Jim Jordan nature. I don't think, I don't think, no, no, I don't think. 
I hope you know, not. I mean, I just, you know, I, I've lost a lot of faith in this whole institution. Yeah. You know, but, but I mean, there's hope. Yeah. Um, again, ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are watching. We keeping up to date, man, multi front, huh? Um, uh, Trump is in court in New hey, York. Your Trump in court window. You got your, your, Gaza Strip and then your house window, yeah. like your multi. So does does the does the speaker vote? Do you have to win a majority of the people in the quorum, or do you just have to win a majority? I, I think you have that to, you have... I think you have to do a, a, a majority of the house. So even if even if every Democrat votes for Jeffries, as long as no Republican votes for Jeffries, we're still okay, safe from that, right? Unless people skip voting and vote present, because then if you have to have the majority of the number of votes cast. Yeah. So if you pass on voting, like you could have 10 Republicans say, I'm not voting. And then mm -hmm. Jeffries could become speaker. And so far, we have zero of those. Right. You remember you remember I said that um, Afghanistan last week went through three Earthquakes over 6.0 on the Richter scale. Three. Crazy. Um, Iran just got 5.8. There's something going on in that area. Some underground nuclear blasts. Yep. Right. Something. Something. That's ridiculous. You're talking about earth. I mean, earthquakes are now showing up like votes for um for Hakeem Jeffries, I guess. Um, wow, earthquakes close to 6.0, man. In that area, I'm surprised they hadn't shifted or tilted something over there. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the Middle East, just in general, right? It's a now. lot, yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you look at Israel, Palestine, there's a lot of geological weird stuff there there's if you look into the actual countries there's a lot of strife and more so than usual there's a lot of activity in the middle east either way uh make sure make sure that you are oh and and joe biden is going to um israel tomorrow. hey <laughs> joe biden will be in your area tomorrow <laughs> joe biden will be in your area he'll be there they might be. I mean, I ain't like telling y'all to do what, do anything. I'm just selling. He's flying in tonight. <laughs> he got his orders. Blinken told him, "You are going." Hey, well, he said he was going to East Palestine. Maybe he just got lost. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of those uh, warthogs? Did you um Did you see the link I sent y'all on the warthogs? No. They're sending warthogs. Yeah, I knew they were gonna. That thing, they said, I mean, they did an x-ray of, of how that plane is con constructed. Every system has triple redundancy. It looks like a Tommy gun in there. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's it's armored, too. It's Kevlar armored. It's a tank killer, the A-10 Thunderbolt. And, and I saw what it did to a tank. It tears tanks up, and it has been it since the up. 60s. They tried to get rid of that jet so many times. Really? And they won't. No, it thank goodness worked. they won't. That's a tank killer. I was in the infantry, and I'll tell you, I was a mechanic in the mechanized infantry, but we went everywhere they went. And when you see a live fire of one of them, man, that's an infantry friend right there because it comes down at, like, treetop level. And then it freaking lets go of those miniguns or the Maverick missiles, and then it banks sharp and flies away, and it's so loud. I love that. Love that plane. When I look at, it's like, um, like I said, it's like a Tommy gun. The um, the gun is underneath. Well, um, the gun sits underneath the pilot seat almost, but the big portion of the gun is in the back. You know, in the big old thing. Uh, it kind of reminds like, me of like Russian military equipment, where it's kind of big and ugly and just really effective at blowing stuff. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, every when system, I'm like the steering and, and uh, everything, there's three of them. So you can get yourself shot up and still make it home. Right. Yeah. And, and those guns that, that Wayne's talking about, remember the old 
uh, Western movies like War Wagon with the Gat. War Wagon. <laughs> that's that's one mean. of them. One of that's them is I mean. motorized. Yes, no, yes. It's motorized. That's what when that because I had those in the army too on the ground based ones, but yeah, the casings of the 20 millimeter shells were green, yeah, right. And, and when the track would shoot, ours were shooting at dr- at missile drones, mm-hmm. but when they would fire, they fire 3,000 or 6,000 rounds a minute, yep. And they got a shoot coming out the side for the brass to go out, and it looks like liquid coming uh-huh. out. There's so many yeah. of them, yeah. it's amazing that they got the timing all down. Cause it's I'm just glad. like, rrr, and that's freaking a thousand rounds. And I'm glad you corrected me. Not a Tommy gun. It's a Gatlin gun. Yeah. It's, it's so, and the thing is huge. I mean, the, the, the thing is huge inside of that thing. You press it. Just like you said, we got to get ready to go. Um, here on the Rainbow's media network. Again, they broadcast. It's, it's all day. It's all day. Pro, all day programming. Make sure you check them out. Jay, give me some last thoughts real quick. Hey, folks, just uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for Red Voice Media. Uh, Wayne Hutch, great show as always. We'll see you guys on hump day. It was a good time. Please don't any Republican ever say Nikki Haley's name again. (laughs) Nikki Haley argues to bring one million Hamas-supporting Palestinians to the United States from Gaza, where over 68% of the population supports terror strikes on Israel. That woman's career is over. Don't come at me with that name again. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you tomorrow. Dwayne Dupree podcast broadcast with Hutch Bailey Jr. And Jr. J.R. Robinson.